powerful scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 1. I've been reading this chapter over and over again for the last couple of weeks, and it's so powerful. It's like the gospel uh, contained right in that chapter of titled this message, The Power of the Gospel Revealed to Grow in Godliness. Uh, in the book of Peter, 1 Peter, sometimes it's described as a book that helps us to endure suffering for Christ. But there's also a lot of nuggets in here on how to walk in holiness, um, how to be strong in the Lord, and how to really reverence and be totally devoted to Jesus Christ. And in 2024, there's nothing more we need than to be devoted to Christ and have that vibrant relationship with Him. So we're going to get into the Word here. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. The to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And I've put a little map up here. The Paul, uh, Apostle Peter wrote this letter to the saints up in this area. You see Bithynia and Pontus. Galatia goes up the side. The Cappadocia, Cappadocia there. And these Christians, they were Gentiles. They were dispersed because of persecution during this time. Uh, Peter, they believe he was born about 1 A.D. And he was martyred in 64 A.D. according to some accounts. And uh, he, the story is that he was beheaded and he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to be crucified the same as his Lord. It was a way to humble himself. And uh, so we do know that about Peter. He didn't travel extensively like Paul did. But he did write these letters that are so precious right now. And in verse uh, 2, 2, it says, Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in sanctification for, of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you, and peace be multiplied. And I'm going to go through and dissect this, and I hope that you'll go home and read this chapter again. <clears throat> this is so powerful. Verse 2 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God. We're elect in Him according to His foreknowledge. That is such a precious nugget. And elect to be sanctified in the Spirit. And this is where we need to examine ourselves. Are we being sanctified in the Spirit in the way that really pleases the Lord? And it's because it says, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. And the Roman persecution began in the first century around, uh, it was around, I believe it was 50, 54 AD. And so the book of First Peter was written around 60 AD. And so the persecution was on its way during the time that this was written. And uh, the Christians addressed in First Peter had been dispersed from different areas they were mostly Gentiles, and this horrible persecution was going on. And I've heard from tour guides over in Rome, they, they say that this never really happened. It was a myth, but there are too many historical narratives that the persecution was real. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, if you've ever read Fox's Book of Martyr, there are accounts with names of people who were actually thrown to the lions and to the, 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 the bulls and for the entertainment. And so, as we consider what Peter saw and who he was writing to, the, these were dire circumstances. You know, we've never been threatened with being thrown into an arena with mm -hmm. a, a raging bull. We are facing some persecution right now. And I, you know, I, I would consider what happened at the Olympics a type of persecution to discredit and to mock Christianity. You know, they had a a drag uh, last supper and uh, unfortunately a lot of the people didn't just walk away from that if I'd been an athlete I would have left it was such a blasphemy but we're seeing this all over the world right now this uh, mockery hatred of Christians and you know we have to look at what they went through in the first century and have the mindset that we're going to be strong during this time and honestly I think a lot of people are they're not strong enough in this area. We can't let ourselves be lukewarm. Pastor Ed says a lot that we leak. You know, we can leak our spirituality because the world is constantly throwing these things at us. 
So we have to constantly be being filled to be able to be strong in this time. We'll go to verse 3, the power of God working through the gospel. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And this is, you, when you really sit down and meditate on these, this is so glorious. We have been begotten into the family of God it, it, through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Uh, verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that doesn't fade away, reserved in heaven for you. And our inheritance, not, it's like here, everything's being corrupted and defiled. And, but in heaven, it's not going to be corrupted, it's undefiled, it's going to be pure. And we can live kind of in that kingdom of God here if we have our hearts right, our homes right, and we can live in that peace that there is in heaven. And I think we all know that there is a peace that passes understanding as we keep ourselves in the word of God and close to Christ. And verse 5, this is so powerful, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Have you considered how God keeps you from the harm that the enemy tries to throw at you right now? Uh, I think it's, it's just glorious when we consider that we are literally kept by God's power. We're protected because he, he wants us to be strong in him and we can call upon him for that power to be stronger with whatever weaknesses we have to be strong in these last days. And verse 6, face trials in 2024, just like the first century. In this you rejoice greatly, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Question today, do you love him, and how much do you love him? Have you looked at your love barometer lately? Because mm -hmm. Pastor Ed and I like to, like to look at that. He talks about examining yourself all the time. Because we can also get into living the life of just a, a Christian ease. We can get into that early, easily. But we have to take our spiritual temperature and keep that level of, of for passion in the Lord. And the first, uh, first Peter chapter 1 will definitely do that. So do you love him, though you've not seen him? And, you know, go and pray. Talk to the Lord about that to increase your love level for him and your devotion for him. Because that's what it takes to get through persecution and trials and strength. And it says, though you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy and express inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And as I read this verse, <clears throat> rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory. And I challenge you to question yourself, when's the last time you were full of this joy inexpressible and full of glory? And that's where we need to be, where our hearts are bubbling over because of the presence of the Lord and the power in his life and just full of the Holy Spirit. And so that's the challenge through First Peter is to really draw strong in this and to be not just your average saint, but raise the bar, raise the bar. And that's what I want to do continually in my life. And because we need that, and we need that to be strong for others right now that are hurting. Um, I recently uh, talked with two people, I might have mentioned this last week, two women I hadn't seen in a long time that were in church years ago, and I found out both of them were struggling with depression. I had no idea, and my heart goes out to them. But the cure for depression, as we sang on We Speak Jesus, the cure is intimacy with Jesus being closer to him than you ever thought. And we need that so we can be light and salt to these other people that are struggling right now. And the angels are still watching us. And, and, <laughs> and I know at home sometimes I, I look around like, yeah, there are angels here watching, you know. And uh, I'll catch myself, what are you thinking about? The angels are watching. 
they want you to be full of joy for the Lord and focused on Him. But we need to be aware the angels are watching. They're excited to see us be fully devoted to God and to have that joy. They know what it's like to be in, in the presence of God. And, they're, and the great cloud of witnesses is spurring us on. The angels are still watching us. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicated when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. So, and we see from this text that the prophets searched carefully and they longed to see the day that we live in because God through the Holy Spirit spoke to them and they prophesied in the Bible uh, about this time that we are able to live in now. This was a time they all looked forward to. And uh, let's go to verse 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which the angels desired to look into. Uh, and that's an amazing verse that we live in this time and God has prepared for 2,000 years or longer for us to have the information we have through Scripture. And the angels are watching us. And the great cloud of witnesses, as it says in verse 10, the prophets inquired. And they're all watching to see how we will respond to the gospel and how we're going to respond in the last days to the trials that we face right now. And a call to holiness in response to persecution Though we're not seeing a lot of persecution here in America, uh, churches are being burned. Uh, Pastor Jeffrey's uh, large church was burned in Texas, I think, last week. Uh, there is a rise in uh, persecution around. In other countries, it's much more serious. And, but there's still a call to holiness, even if it's a tiny bit of persecution or a lot, because only holiness is going to get us through the trials and the persecution. And we're just seeing a release of, of wickedness, such as the Olympics, and usually it filters down a little bit and we start seeing things decaying around us. And so all the more we need to do what it says here in verse 13. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully on that grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a day coming, whether he takes you home early or whether he comes back or the rapture, when grace is going to be revealed to you through Jesus Christ. And that grace is going to be indescribably glorious. And we need to set our hearts on that moment when we see him. There's many scriptures that talk about this. Set your heart fully on, or your heart fully on that hope when Christ is revealed so that we're not ashamed. As Pastor Ed says a lot, that... He'll just go into the presence of the Lord one day uh, saying, as I was saying, Lord, it would be just that type of a transition. It would be, he was in prayer here and he's going to be in prayer there. And that's walking closely to the Lord. Verse 14, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all your conduct. Because it's written, be a holy for I am holy. And we'll go to redeemed by the blood. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross should always be before us, especially as we repent of sins, ask him to help us with things we struggle with. We have to remember how he died on the cross and the suffering that was not a light suffering, it was a horrible death that he died to pay for our sins. And we need to honor that death and strive to live in holiness as he's calling us to, even more so in 2024. 
There's not a lot of messages out on holiness, but that is the key to our walk, to be strong with him. In verse 20, he was indeed foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Glory to his name. So before the foundation of the world, there's other scriptures that talk about how God knew us before the foundation of the world. It was always his plan to create us because he loves us and all of our frailty and sometimes rebellion, God loves us so much he sent his son. And that just never gets old. And we have to keep that in front of us. That's the core of the gospel, that God loves us and wants the best for us. And that's only attained through walking in holiness with Christ. <clears throat> in verse 22, love one another. Since you've purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not a corruptible seed, but with incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man <clears throat> as of the flower of the grass. <clears throat> the grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. And we can stand on verse 25, the word of the Lord endures forever. So go through these, there's other promises in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, and all through the book that he will give us the grace that's needed. We can get wisdom from him on how to walk in this world. And verse 23 is so important. We've been born again, literally born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. We've been taken from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, and we need to attain all that God has for us in this kingdom of light through the Holy Spirit and walking in holiness. <clears throat> I did a little chart here to kind of recap all of this for application, because we read it, and it's wonderful, and then we need to break it down. How can that apply to us? What can we do this week? How can, you know, how can we really apply this to our walk? Because the Word should always be challenging you and helping mm -hmm. you to apply it in different ways. And so we're going to look at the challenge of 1 Peter to be godly. And uh, so in, in 2, 11, and 12, it said, Let your life be a witness regardless of circumstances. That's another way to put it having faith no matter what happens, no matter what trial's going on, but to be a witness and to keep that before you and uh, uh, to, get, to get rid of the buttons that can be pushed through, I don't know, so many things, fear, anxiety. People are struggling with depression right now, uh, a lot of people. So we need to be a witness no matter what's going on and get strong enough that you're at that place. And 221 through 24, understand that suffering is a part of the Christian life. And I know for years there was a little uh, doctrine that talked, said there's not suffering. There is suffering, but God gets us through it. Mm -hmm. There's sickness, but healing comes. One day our bodies will wear out. So although we, we do go through suffering, there's also the grace of God and the power of God to help us through these things and make us strong. And... Uh, Verse, well, we've got three, eight through nine. Choose to bless and not curse. And that there's power in that when you use your words to bless and not curse. And that's also basic in your walk is to uh, not grumble about things and to just look at it through God's eyes and have, be full of faith. And then 315, keep Jesus as Lord always and be ready to share your faith with others and if you can't articulate the gospel you know work on that at home work on sharing the gospel practice before the mirror if you need to you know a lot of people have trouble sharing the gospel but if you just you know look over it use the roman road for example or the abc's there's different things to do so where you can share the gospel with others and four nine extend hospitality and then five uh, Five, five through seven, live in humility to be humble because 
the other uh, scripture says that we live in, we humble yourself and the Lord will lift you up in due time. And all these things will help you to live a godly life in 1 Peter. And what I really like about the book of 1 Peter is cultivating dynamic devotion. If you really read it with Peter's heart, he's just so devoted to Christ. He is in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I just don't see that a lot in Christian circles, you know. That's something we need to cultivate. And I know most of us here love the Lord. There may be people watching the video that struggle with that. Because uh, you can walk the Christian walk and do all the right things and say the right things and not be in love with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And to be in love with Him is the first thing. The first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, strength, and soul. Uh, and so... Loving Him is number one. And the other things will fall into place if we have that. And uh, one, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, Praise God that you are kept by His power. Meditate on that. That, you know, you're just not out here in the universe alone. You are literally held by the power of Almighty God who created all things. And 1, 8, Deeply love and devote yourself to Jesus, though you cannot see Him. You will see him one day. You will see him face to face. You will look in his eyes. And you want to not be ashamed. You want to love him now. Be known by him and known of him. And 110, study the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus. How they foretold how he was going to suffer and pay for your sins. And really get strengthened in your faith in him. And 113, stay focused on the grace. Like the, like the word said. This grace that's going to be brought to you when he's revealed to you. None of us are exactly sure how glorious that's going to be. But I know to be in the presence of Jesus, and God, and the Holy Spirit is going to be um, our destiny. Our, our, full, our whole destiny. And two, four through six, draw near to Jesus as the chief cornerstone of the church. Mm -hmm. Loving him, knowing he's in charge of the church and knowing that he'll guide you in everything you need. And 2.9, praise him. He made you a royal, a, a chosen generation, and a royal priest, priesthood rescuing you from darkness. I mean, isn't that amazing? You're a chosen generation, and you're in the royal priesthood to worship and serve him, and that's fulfilling the calling. The priests were totally devoted to the Lord. They were set apart in the Old Testament. And that's how we are today. We're to serve Him wholeheartedly. And He's everything to us. And we just have to praise Him for this high calling He's given us. And then in 5-7, don't worry about anything. Just cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. He loves you. And sometimes in this crazy world, when things are going on, one trial after the other, like He said would happen, sometimes you just can get a little bit down. But we go to this verse, cast your cares on him, and claim that, because the word of the Lord will not return vo void. Everything is true in here. So for every trial, everything is true. And in closing, I have a, it's a, just a little drawing of Peter. in the He's in the boat with the other disciples, and Jesus is calling from the shore, saying, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He told them to cast down the nets, of course, and they took in, more, took in more than they ever could have. And that's how it is with our life. We'll receive more than we ever thought when we follow him. Peter followed Jesus and encourages us to do the same. And so when you go through 1 Peter this week, see his heart for the Lord Jesus, his devotion. Even though he gave a lot of instructions, his motivation was this radical love for Jesus Christ. He did see Jesus. He walked with him. And he encourages us to do the same. So I pray that you will go into 1 Peter and read it this week. Pray through it. Ask the Lord to really draw you closer. We, we all always need that, all of us. And so we, I pray that you will do that this week and be very blessed as you read the Word. Let's pray over the message. Father God, I thank you 
uh, for the life of Peter, Apostle Peter. We thank you for the letters that you wrote.